friends, Dr. Lewis here. Today we are gonna work on meeting this standard, which is the fourth grade measurement and data. A, because it's the first one of that cluster of standards, and one, because there are more than one A standard. So this one, um, A1, is all about meeting this target. This target says I can create conversion tables for length, weight, and capacity units using measurement tools and use the tables to solve problems. Now, this target might not seem super familiar to you, but the content that we're gonna be covering today is incredibly familiar. We've been working on creating ratio tables or conversion tables pretty much all year. We've also been already working on length, weight, and capacity, but the coolest thing about meeting this target and this standard is that we get to get to combine a lot of different things that we've learned throughout the year into one. So we are gonna be practicing the RDW strategy. RDW you'll see come up in the Zern lessons this week um, and it stands for read, draw, write. So you're gonna read the problem, you're gonna draw a picture to go with the problem and then you're gonna write your response. So something that's really important to note is that there's going to be multiple operations when we're solving problems like this. Operations, of course multiple, let me start here, means more than one. And operations are when we add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So a lot of these problems will ask us to use multiple operations or the more than one of these skills in order to solve the problem. So we're gonna do something a little bit different today. I have taken some of the extra problem sets from Zerm. I've also attached those problem sets to your playlist so you can follow along with me at home using those problem sets. So if that's something that you would like to do, pause the video now and go to the math section of the playlist and find where it says copy of problems used in this week's videos. Today, we're gonna to be working on lesson one because we're focusing on lesson one for Zern mission seven. So we're gonna be using the read, draw, write strategy to solve problems one through three. And then on number four, it's giving us a conversion table to fill out. We've gotta name a rule. And then it continues with more conversion tables for other things. This one is of course for weight, and this is for length. So we're actually gonna be using um, multiple to help us meet this target. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the way that these problems were mapped out is they gave us, um, to start, they gave us some word problems to start with, and then a conversion table at the bottom. So that requires us to have some background knowledge. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that you guys have the background knowledge necessary in order to solve these problems. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is converting length, weight, and capacity. So let's talk about weight. because that's actually what comes up in these first ones. So typically we measure weight in pounds and ounces. One pound equals 16 ounces. So that's what we are gonna be using this week for weight. We're also gonna look at length today and we're going to be measuring length in three ways we're going to be measuring um, yards and feet and one yard equals three feet we're also going to be looking at feet to inches and that should say foot is one foot, not one feet, one foot, equals 12 
inches. So if that is true, how would we figure out how many inches is in one yard? How would we use this information to figure out how many inches is in one yard? Well, if we know that there are three feet in one yard and that there are 12 inches in three feet, we could say 12 inches times three feet, because that equals the one yard, equals what's 12 times three. I know that three times two in the ones place is six. I know that three times one in the tens place is three. So that would be 36 inches. So one yard equals 36 inches. My neighbors are playing the drums. So we have a little background music. Okay, so we are gonna be focusing on these two today. We're gonna be focusing on weight and length today. And then in our next video, we'll focus a little bit more on capacity. And then again, on later on, on time. So we're gonna go ahead and get started, making sure that we remember this information because it's gonna help us solve these problems later. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with page one from lesson one. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to read, draw, and write to help us with number one. So let me zoom in here. Okay, number one says, Evan put a two-pound weight on one side of the scale. How many one-ounce weights will he need to put on the other side of the scale to make them equal? So I'm gonna, I just read that. He put a two pound weight on one side. How many one ounce weights will be needed to put on the other side? So I've read it. Now I'm gonna draw on this side of the scale. He has two LB, that's two pounds. So on this side, if we want to make that equal, how do we do that? This is where we come back to our um, target. We can create a conversion table using this information. If we know that, that's for ounces, if we know that one pound equals 16 ounces, two pounds is what? How do we do that? There's a couple ways we could do that. We could say 16 times two or 16 plus 16. That's gonna get you the same answer either way you cut it. So take a moment to solve that one on your own. And we're back, 16 ounces times the two pounds that we're looking for. Two times six is 12, using the standard algorithm here. So two times six in the ones place is 12. We can't just put that 10 there, so we can give that 10 to the tens place. And then two times one in the tens place is two or 20, plus another 10 is 30. So two times one is two, plus one is three. So that would be 32 ounces. So that would make this side 32 ounces to make the scale even. So we did our reading, we did our drawing, we did our writing. So the answer is 32 ounces. Okay, so let's use that same model when we're answering number two. Julius put a three pound weight on one side of the scale. Abel put, a thir put 35 one ounce weights on the other side. How many more one ounce weights does Abel need to balance the scale? So let's go back to our conversion chart. If one pound is 16 ounces and two pounds is 32 ounces, three pounds, is how many ounces?
ounces. How many ounces would that be? We could do this a couple ways. I want you to pause the video and try it on your own. And we're back. We could say 16 plus 16 plus 16. We could say 32 plus 16. I'm gonna say 16 times three because one pound is 16 ounces. So three pounds is three times 16, which we have right here. Three times six we know is 18, carry that one. Three times one is three, plus that one is four. So that would be 48 ounces. Now, is that the answer? It is not the answer. We still need to do a little bit of drawing to figure out the answer. Because remember, we said that there would be multiple operations, more than one of these guys that we gotta use to solve. So let's figure what that is gonna be. So we've got Julius over here. He's got three pounds on one side of the scale. And we've got on this side of the scale, Abel, he put 35 ounces. Now, we know that, and I'll just draw my little scale right here. It's not quite even, is it? We gotta add something to it. So I'm gonna say plus something. Okay, so we need to figure out how to make the scale actually balanced. It's gotta be, we've gotta add something to this scale to make it balanced because three pounds does not equal 35 ounces, it equals 48. So how are we gonna figure out the missing information that we need in order to balance our scale? Pause the video, try it out. All right, you probably realize that we need to find the difference between 48 and 35, and that's the missing information that will get us to equal out to three pounds, because 48 ounces is the same as three pounds. So we need to figure out 35 plus what equals 48. Easiest way to do that? Boom. Find the difference. And this one's really cool because we don't even have to regroup. Eight minus five, that's three. Four minus three, that's one. So Abel will need 13 ounces to balance out the scale. Abel needs 13 one ounce weights. Boom. So the answer wasn't just what, how many ounces in, is in three pounds. We had to figure out, first of all, how many ounces were in three pounds, then find how many more Abel needed to get to that 35 ounces. So those are the kinds of questions you're gonna be asked this week. Okay, here's one more. It says, Miss Upton's baby weighs five pounds and four ounces. How many total ounces does the baby weigh? So we read it. Now let's do a little drawing and a little writing. So this baby is five LBs and then four OZ because you know pounds are more than ounces. So he's five pounds, four ounces. Question says, how many total ounces does the baby weigh? So we need to figure out how many ounces is in that five pounds and that four ounces. So why don't you take a moment, pause the video, try it out and come back and see how you did. All right, here we go. So let's get our handy dandy conversion chart. We already know so many of these. We know that one pound is 16 ounces. We know that two pounds is 32 ounces. We know that three pounds is 48 ounces. Here's what we don't know yet. Four pounds and then five pounds, the pounds that we're going for over here. That baby, how much does that baby weigh? So if we're using a conversion table, remember the rules are always the same. We did one times what equals what? One times 16 equals 16. Two times 16 equals 32. Three times 16 equals 48. So to figure out 
how many ounces are in four pounds and five pounds, we need to take 16 times four pounds and 16 times five pounds. Now, of course, you can do this lots of different ways. This is the most efficient way. It might not be the easiest for you and that's okay, but we're talking about efficiency. So this one's gonna get us there the quickest. If you need to use a different method because of your understanding, that is always okay. More than one way to solve a problem. All right, so let's look at this one. Four times 16. Four times six in the one place, that's 24. Carry the two or the 20 to the tens place. Four times one or four times 10, because it's the 10 place is four or 40, plus 20 right here. That would be 60. So we look at, think of that as four times one is four, plus two is six. And of course that means 60 because it's in the tens place, 64. So four pounds is 64 ounces. And then five pounds, five times six is 30. Five times one is five, six, seven, eight. Now, five pounds, we figured that that was 80 ounces. So we can cross out that five pounds because we converted it to ounces. But look, what do we have still over here? The four ounces because he weighed five pounds and four ounces. So what do we do? Those multiple operations, we're not just multiplying, we are also, that's right, Adding them together, 80 ounces plus four ounces. You got it right, it's 84 ounces. So, the baby weighs 84 ounces. Sweet. Okay, so for this one, I would like for you to pause this video and I would like for you to create this chart somewhere on a sheet of paper or a post-it note or in your journal, anywhere, and I would like for you to fill it in using the correct ounces. All right, welcome back. So remember, we know that one pound is 16 ounces. We learned that three pounds is 48 ounces because that's three times 16, what about seven? What about 10? And what about 17? That's right, same thing. We take 16 ounces times the seven pounds to figure out how many ounces is in seven pounds. Seven times six is 42. Seven times one is seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's 112 ounces. Now, I want you to solve 16, or excuse me, 10 pounds times 16 ounces without writing anything down using that mental math. You guessed it, or should I say, you knew it. It's 160, because we have 16 tens, which is literally translates to 160. Now, pro tip, 16 times 17 is the same as something else on this chart. That's right, it's 112 plus 160 because 7 and 10 together make 17. So if we were breaking down 16 times 7 plus 16 times 10, we would get the same as 16 times 17. So you're taking out so much of the work because you've already done it here and here. So let's add those up. 2 times or 2 plus 0 is 2. 6 plus 1 is 7, 1 plus 1 is 2, and that is 272. Let's use our trusty cheat sheet over here and see if that's right. So I have 17 pounds times 16 ounces, and I get 
272 ounces. Pro tip. All right. So the rule for converting pounds to ounces is multiply pounds by 16 ounces. Boom. All right. So that was the first section of lesson one. The next section is going to be all about length. And we are going to be focusing on feet, inches, and yards. And we're going to be doing some conversions over here using this information from up here. So if you need a break, please pause the video, take a break, and come on back when you're ready. And we're back. So if we refer back to our notes before, we know that one yard is three feet and one foot is 12 inches. So I'm gonna put that information in my conversion tables right here. One foot, <laughs> it says feet too. One feet, one foot is 12 inches. One yard is three feet. I want you to pause the video and I want you to fill out these two conversion tables on your own. And we're back. Okay, friends, remember if we're taking, if we have one foot is 12 inches, we need to say that two feet is two times the 12 inches. Cause it's like putting one ruler on top of another that's two sets of 12 inches. And I bet you already know that two times 12 is 24. Nice job. What is five? times 12. Think about what you know, either about counting by fives or clocks. Five times 12 is, that's right, it's 60. All right, how many inches are in 10 feet? There are 12 tens and 12 tens is 120. Remember that pro tip from before, we need to know how many in inches are in 15 feet, but look, we have five and 10. You need to put them together. 60 plus 120, zero plus zero is zero. Six plus two is eight. And we have nothing plus one is one. Booyah, 180 inches. The rule for converting feet to inches is times 12, that's the rule, or times 12 inches. All right, friends, so same rules apply over here, except we're not multiplying by 12, we're multiplying by three because one yard is three feet. A yardstick has three rulers on it. So if one yard is three feet, that means two yards is six feet. That means four yards is, what's four times three? You got it, it's 12. And then 10 yards? How many feet is in 10 yards? Booyah, it's 30. And then remember our pro tip, we know four feet, or four yards is how many feet. We know 10 yards is how many feet. Put those together and we get 14 yards. What do we do? That's right, we take the four feet is 12 inches plus the 10, or excuse me, rewind. The four yards is 12 feet plus the 10 yards, that's 30 feet. We add those together and we get 42 feet. What rule did we follow for converting yards to feet? We said times three or times three feet. All right, so now here comes the time for some multiple operations. Multiple operations it is. So check it, we've got three feet one inch equals how many inches? So not only do we need to multiply three feet times 
you know, 12 inches and one foot, we've got to add that one little inch onto it. So three feet. Oh, it's not on our chart. So, okay, I know that one foot is 12 inches, two feet is 24 inches. What is three feet gonna be? If I'm not sure, I've gotta write it out. 12 times three, three times two is six. Three times one is three. But is the answer 36 inches? It is not because there's one little extra inch. So we say 36 plus one, that is 37 inches. Let's look at this one. Five yards, one foot is how many feet? Well, if I know that one yard is three feet, I can do this in my head. One yard is three feet. So that means five yards, five times three, five, 10, 15, boom. 15 feet is five yards, but look, plus one foot, so that's not 15, it's 16 feet. All right, next we've got 27 pounds, 10 ounces. So I'm gonna come back to my previous conversion chart. Remember, pounds and ounces, one pound is 16 ounces. So if I've got 27 pounds, 10 ounces, my goodness, I'm gonna have to get some extra work paper. Lucky for me, I've got some right here. So 27 pounds, if I'm gonna figure out how many ounces that is, I need to take 27 times, that's right, you remember from our previous conversion chart, 27 times 16, so. Woo, that is gonna be a tricky one. So this is where we're gonna pull out some of our old strategies that we've been doing all year long. We are going to make an open array or an area model to help us with 27 times 16 because we are not ready for the standard algorithm for double digit multiplication yet. Remember that's a fifth grade um, standard. So you'll master that next year. So let's remember how we break this down. We break 27 into 20 and seven and we break down 16 into 10 and six. So let's draw our array your parents will be so impressed when you show them this. If you wanna pause the video now and show off your mad um, open array skills, area model skills, I would ask you to do that right now. All right, so we're gonna take 27 up at the top and we're gonna take 16 over in the side. It doesn't matter which way you go, I just like to always put the larger number on the top. It's just the way I do it but you're gonna get the same answer either way. So we need to fill in each one of these boxes by matching up the numbers that are over each one of the boxes and multiplying them. So 10 times 20 is 200. 10 times the seven and 27, that's 70. So that means 10 times 27, that makes sense that it would be 270. Now we are taking the six and 16 times the 20 and the seven and 27. So six times 20 is 120. And then six times seven is 42. So we need to add those together. Two plus zero is two, four plus two is six, one plus nothing is one. Now what do we do with these two numbers? You remembered, we add them together. Zero plus two is two. Seven plus six is 13. Two plus one plus one is four. So, my goodness, 27 pounds equals 432 ounces. Now I'm gonna go back to the question because it says 27 pounds, 10 ounces. Well, that's just 27 pounds. What do we do with those 10 ounces? That's right, we add those 10 ounces to see how many total ounces. Again, multiple operations. So two plus zero is two, 
3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus nothing is 4, so 27 pounds, 10 ounces is 442 ounces. All right, we're going to do one more together, and then I'm going to ask you to do the rest on your own. So this one is 14 pounds, 5 ounces, equals how many ounces? So we need to take... 14 pounds times 16 ounces per pound. And you guessed it, we're gonna make another open array because why not? Lots of good practice going on here. So I'm gonna draw my open array, my area model. I'm gonna put my 16 up top, because remember I like the big number up top, that's 10 and six is 16. And then my smaller number is 14, 10 and four. And then I'm going to draw my lines. I need four boxes here because I have four, one, two, three, four numbers that I'm multiplying together. So 10 times 10, 100. 10 times six, 60, that's 160. 10 times four, that's 40. Four times six, that's 24. Four plus zero is four, two plus four, is six, so that's 64. I add those together. Zero plus four is four. Six plus six is 12. One plus one is two. Now I just want to double check. That is how much, how many ounces is in 14 pounds. That equals 224 ounces. But don't forget, it says 14 pounds, five ounces. So I need to take 224 ounces plus those pesky five ounces we had to add on. I know that four plus five is nine. So that is 229 ounces total. Remember, multiple operations. You can't see that. Multiple operations. We can't just say we're done without making sure that we've included all the necessary information. So, what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask every single person to pause the video. Once you pause the video, you are going to solve these on your own. When you unpause the video, you're going to come back and you're going to see the answers. We're not going to talk it out because I'm using the exact same strategies we've been doing and we've been doing this video for 30 minutes already, so it's time for us to, to move along to Zern. So go ahead and get started and when you come back, you'll have the answers. Eleven times, uh, excuse me, eleven times twelve plus ten. I did twelve times three plus two. Did 18 times 3 plus 9. Ooh, and here comes another one. This one is a challenge, remember? So you needed to say 5 yards plus 2 feet. We need to see how many feet that is first. So I'm going to take 5 times 3 plus 2. That's a total of 17 feet. So that's 17 feet, but that's how many inches. I'm taking 17 times 12. That's 204 inches. Excellent work, friends. All right, so I wish you luck today as you work on Zern, making sure you're meeting this target, creating those conversion tables for length, weight, and then of course later we'll be working on capacity and we're using those measurement tools and using those tables to solve problems. We're also using the read, draw, write strategy. Um, and I wish you luck. I can't wait to see what you do. Bye.